With Coach Poynton, as we wind our way toward the end of Big 12 Conference, playing into the postseason, and, and I guess I'll just start with this, and, and I guess we get reminded constantly, but this league is really hard. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it is. You know, it, is. it just is. I mean, your team's played so well, but there's just no, there's just no break ever. Yeah, that's why you just have to focus on today. You know, you got to focus on getting better today, uh, trying to make sure that you're in the right frame of mind to deal with the thing that is directly in front of you. Um, I always say it, the second hardest thing to do in this league is to look ahead. Uh, the hardest thing you can do in this league is look behind you. Because no matter what you've done, whether you've played well or not played well, or whether you've won or lost, if you're focused on that, then the thing in front of you is going to really get you. And so we got to stay focused on the day-to-day -day getting better, trying to make sure we're in a good frame of mind and trying to prepare for the next opportunity that we have in front of us. So you're coming off a, a challenging road trip, and you had played so well, so obviously there's, there's a little bit of a contrast there. Do, do you have to worry about making sure the guys mentally stay confident and, and remember that, hey, it wasn't that long ago that you rattled off a great run? I mean, how do you manage that? Yeah, that's a big part of the psychology of coaching this time of year is when you run into a little bit of a valley, you know, especially after coming off a, a really strong um, you know, climb there, you got to get back to the basics of how did we play? What were the things that we were executing well? And obviously the turnovers have been a big issue for us. We got to get that corrected. Uh, but most importantly, we got to get back to defending at the level that we were defending at. You know, our defense is definitely taking a slip. You know, part of it is you're playing against really good teams with really good players. When you talk about Kansas and TCU on the road and West Virginia on the road, uh, but we played those teams all before and had much better showing. So how do we get back to the core of defending the basketball at the point of attack, you know, covering up when we do get beat, and then rebounding at a really high level so that offensively we can get some easy baskets? Okay, not meaning this as an excuse, because I know you don't believe in those, but you know, obviously you lost Avery Anderson, who is, I think everyone would agree, one of the elite defenders on the perimeter in college basketball. So... Does it take a little time for teams to maybe understand, okay, so now how do we attack Oklahoma State since Avery Anderson's not there? Then once that occurs, then you have to figure out, okay, you have to figure out, okay, what's our counter for what people have come up with against you, if that makes sense? Absolutely. Uh, this game, as you go through a league like this one, where it's, there's so many good coaches, it, it, everybody makes adjustments based off what the other team has or does. And for us, not having Avery Anderson is giving teams a – a better way to attack us from the perimeter. And we have good enough personnel to still get the job done, but we have to do it a little bit differently. Avery's really, really good picking up the ball full court, pressuring and harassing the guy, making it difficult for a shooter to get catches. But we don't have anybody else quite built like him, and so we've got to do it with more team concepts, uh, maybe having a little bit more help uh, conscious, a help conscious mentality on the defensive end. And then we've got to do a really, really good job of rebounding the ball uh, so that we can get out in transition and then do what we do really well offensively, which is score before the defense gets set on the other end. So now you've got big home stretch, Kansas State and Baylor coming up. It's sort of your thoughts, Kansas State, the reality is, you know, you were limited personnel-wise in Manhattan, Kansas. You still had a chance to beat those guys, a really good chance back in mid-January. Yeah, when they were playing at a really, really high level, you know, coming off two big road wins, uh, I think they had played at Baylor and at Texas the week prior, had won both of those games, and were coming in with tremendous momentum. And they played well. I still remember Keontae Johnson's play that basically closed the game on the lob from uh, Marquise Noel, but we were playing without Musa Cisse, and really at that game without Avery Anderson mm -hmm. as well, who was dealing with the first part of his injured hand. So um, to be able to have some time now to develop you know, a different kind of game plan, a different strategy, and to see how both teams have evolved. You know, some of these teams we played twice within two weeks. With them, we haven't played them in two months at this point. Yeah. And so it's going to be a totally different approach. But we've got to play with great intensity on the defensive end, knowing that they've got two of the really more dynamic offensive players in the whole conference. Really, same situation with Baylor because that was your next game after Kansas State when you went down to Waco. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, probably one of our poorer performances – on both ends, we just didn't have a whole lot of confidence going into that game. Uh, but we, we, we're certainly a lot better. You know, we got to get Caleb Boone going again. He struggled over the last week. He was a big part of that run that we made and winning five straight. Uh, and then we got to find some consistency 
uh, from a backcourt standpoint. You know, John Michael struggled a little bit up at West Virginia, but had been playing really well. And Bryce Thompson's got to you know, continue to do what he's done when we've had success, which is make shots and make easy baskets for us. And But like I said, the, the defensive part is the part that we've really got to tighten the screws on and give ourselves a great chance to finish this regular season out in a strong fashion. The Saturday game against Kansas State has a lot of sidebars to it. You're going to have your senior day, uh, which is not your last home game, but, but you'll tell us why that's the case. And then you're having a reunion, too. So Saturday with Kansas State coming to town, an old Big 8 matchup, a lot on the line. That's, it's going to be a cool day. Yeah, and we hope we have a great turnout of fan support. They, our fans have been tremendous. Uh, and we choose to do senior day this year on a Saturday, uh, which isn't our last home game because there's more opportunity for people to come. We know weekdays are a little bit more difficult. Uh, so with the families of the players in mind, giving them an opportunity to do it on a weekend, on an early afternoon game, uh, to be able to come out and support these young men, it would be phenomenal. But we're also having our alumni weekend. Uh, last year we had over 100 uh, former players and managers and coaches come back, and I think this year the number's up to 200. Uh, so that's continuing to grow. I think the guy's love for this program shows and is evident when you have these type of events. And I look forward to celebrating the successes of our past, but also giving those guys an opportunity to see how hard these guys are working to uphold the legacy that they've left behind. Do you feel like these seniors have maybe gone through perhaps the most challenging time in the history of college sports? COVID, transfer portal, NIL, We'll say, oh, those are good things, but there are more that they have to deal with. Could, could this have been, for this group, perhaps the most challenging time ever for a college athlete because of what everything that's happened? Yeah, you didn't mention that last year they were you know, withheld from being too. able to even participate. Um, and the NCAA tournaments, you got to earn your way there. Everybody gets a chance to play in the conference tournament. Well, these kids weren't even allowed to do that last year. So, you know, to have, have gone through those things, it'll make them – stronger people, stronger willed, tough minded folks. Uh, but I feel bad that in a lot of ways, some of their experiences have been tainted by things that they had no control over. And so hopefully we can give them a chance to finish their senior season, uh, which some of them it'll be their last, for some of them it won't be, uh, on a really positive note going into the next part of their lives. Did all of that, and of course we know with the NCAA tournament, you know, absence, what that did, but with everything else that's happened, you've probably had to change how you manage things to some degree, right? I mean, or no? No, we've had we've had to. Uh, part of it is adapting to what the kids' needs are. And every team is a little bit different in that regard. You know, this team with a lot of you know, guys who, who, who kind of came in not really understanding what college basketball was about and developing into really good players. Avery Anderson, Caleb Boone are great examples of that. You know, and they're not really even understanding the band, not even understanding what was going on with COVID not really having an understanding of what NIL means and seeing some of their teammates, you know, transfer out because of transfer portal, but also dealing with new guys. You know, these guys, Caleb and, and, and Avery, for, for the best example, are guys who played four years for us. They're going to have a much different senior day experience than Caleb Asbury, than Bernard Kuma, who in Caleb Asbury's situation, only one year. Yeah. And Bernard Kuma, three years. But very, very different experiences for all of them. So it's senior day when the Cowboys face Kansas State. Looking forward to having a great crowd followed up by another great game against Baylor as we work our way toward the postseason. Thanks for watching.